Hello everyone, welcome back to part 3 and in this video I'm going to go over basic server options um, so in the last few videos we went with ba making a basic schema um, though we have not, I have not gone over weapons with you so right now it's just factions and classes and basic item creation oh well you might have weapons in there but um, if you don't that's okay um, so today I'm going to teach you how to plug these in to a server and we're going to go over basic server information and get your server started. Uh, this is where I do the transition. Alright, welcome back. Alright, so if you have a server panel, you will have something close to startup parameters, though it is unique to each server provider, but mine startup parameters. And I have something else with server details, but I'll, just, I'll tell you that in a second. So here we have basic server stuff. Um, if you have just like a server, if you have it on your computer itself, the server running or on a virtual machine, you will have a text file or a, a bat, bat file that you will have to edit. Just right click and then open up with Notepad++ and you'll come up with this command line. It is known to as the command line, and this shows max players, game mode, map, workshop, and all that junk. Okay. So, um, what we're gonna do here is I'm going to go over some basic stuff. Um, so basic map. Um, there you have to set a basic map. Though I just set to GM construct or flat grass because that's all you really need in the beginning when you're just doing basic server stuff. You should really care about the map until you get your schema working, but you might want to have an idea of what map you want to use. Game mode. Now this is where we're going to set our schema to. So mine's going to be different than yours, but what it's going to be is this schema file right here that we renamed. You're going to put this in here. And if you have some, it might be like a drop box, like a box you click on. Um, if you have this, you're going to have to type it in manually. Just get rid of sandbox and then type in your schema name and then save it and it will boot up this. Make sure you have this in your game modes folder as well, the main the helix file. All right. Um, with that being said, what these are the players. This obviously that's self-explanatory. Archon password. Um, this is just a password that the owner to the access to the dashboard can use to access certain commands in the console. Workshop collection. So when you create a when you open up a workshop collection, it will have numbers at the end. It's a unique code that every collection has so you'll copy and paste that in here for so because the server calls to using these numbers to decide whether you to decide on the uh, well collection so yeah that's that so this is you can just look at this stuff um, IP port uh, and then that's basically it Tick rate, all oh, tick rate's also important. Um, tick rate, I like to describe it as the server's frame rate. That's not, obviously, people that know it will cringe at that, but that's the basic explanation. It's basically how many times the server refreshes every second. So the higher is the, it will be more. So if you have a lower server, you might want to set your tick rate lower, just so it doesn't have to work as hard. But, it, but uh, a higher end servers don't have to care about that and it will generally make a smoother experience for most players the higher it is but then it has to work more so it's something that every server owner needs to balance next uh, we'll go over this right here um, actually I'm gonna cut that out so next we're going to check the config file now some people have something in here I'm not going to show you that, but some people have stuff in here to, in like the server panel that can just change off the bat, but we're going to go and we're just going to do the manual way. You're going to go into Gary's mod, config, and then go down here to server config. So here is, 
a lot of the things that you're going to need when you have a server being made. Um, if you have ULX, these are some things you want to have. These are default for uh, when they when your server spawns them. So I recommend having these one because when you first join a server, no clips automatically turned on, and sometimes even God mode. So here you can turn no clipping on from the start. Just turn it off. And here you can also set the server name, which is important. So you just don't want it just to be a blank server, like a Stillwell server in my case. You don't want it to be that. Loading URLs, the loading screen. There are some websites that you can do that with. I'm using live.gmon-lsm. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not, this isn't a plug. I'm not being sponsored, obviously, but it's a pretty good website. They do have a premium service, and there will be a... There, and there will be like um, a banner at the bottom as an advertisement for the website since using the free version, but I don't care too much. And honestly, no one really cares. It's really just up to you. Uh, here are other values. Sometimes you'll have this automatically, but if you don't, um, then you, there, you can just find the, the, all this X, S box stuff online, or I can leave a comment down there if anyone needs it. I'd be glad to do that for you. You don't need to change these you don't at all also something you might want to add is the s box max text screens if you have the 3d text screens add on um, it's to default it's only set to one per player but this I said it's 10 so you can set down multiple ones without having to perma prop each one so that's a thing so yeah that's the server config so those are basics that's your command line and your con your config and so that's basic server information to get your server running. Um, yeah, in the next episode, I will teach you how to put a collection together. And then as well, we're going to work on, I'll give you a demonstration on actually making the weapon and then putting this, this uh, schema into my server and then giving it a basic run in the next couple episodes and then as well so on the plan is to go through plugins which i'll probably do if not in the next episode then the one after and that would probably be around the basics that you need to know to get a server running for anyone so yeah uh thank you for watching and uh stay tuned for more uh, bye everyone